Hey guys, today I want to talk about the four mistakes you might be making on Junkrat. Junkrat's a kind of a challenging hero, and while there's a lot of tricks you can be using to make him stronger, like making sure that you're landing W's that are knocking people over walls, as well as using your E to make sure that they're in range when they get locked down so you can throw them over walls, there's a variety of tips and tricks that I can do videos about later, but there's really four mistakes that I see people making on Junkrat all the time, which makes him kind of a subpar hero if you're making these mistakes. And if you're making all of these mistakes, you're essentially causing him to have a lower win rate than he really should have when he's actually a really strong hero and competitive. So the first thing is that a lot of people, when they're trying to down something really quickly, they just do auto attacks, um, or they'll be running down and they'll just do their Qs. You can see, when I just do Qs, my DPS is around 350. When I just do auto attacks, my DPS is around 350. But you can actually alternate your Qs and your auto attacks. And you can see my DPS is around 600, so uh, almost 700. So you can essentially double your DPS by alternating your auto attacks and your Qs. And it's because your auto attack timer, the, attacks, or the, the time in between each auto attack, which for Junkrat is exactly one second, this is not interrupted by the cast time of your Q. It's still one second, even though I'm throwing Qs in between. So you can essentially double your DPS by making sure that you're uh, alternating between your auto attacks and your Qs. That's the first big mistake that I see a lot of people doing. Now, don't get me wrong, you don't need to always do this. Um, if you're going into a fight and you see that there's a fight down here, feel free to throw off some Qs to prepare the fight, and then you can go in and use your other abilities however you want to. Um, so you don't need to waste time either just to have that available. So that's the first mistake that I see a lot of people making. There's also kind of a mini tip in this, which is that you could only you could fire off a single uh, frag grenade first, and then the, the cooldown starts going, which means that as you get closer to fight, you could have three ready, and then go in and do this combo, and then you'll have your cooldown up in a second, and you'll have another four ready. So that's another thing that you can do, um, and both of these things require a little bit of practice. So if you're ready to go into a fight, you can always throw out one just to get the cooldown going, and then uh, once the cooldown's going, you can actually get closer to the fight and prepare to fire actually seven frag launchers instead of the usual four. So those are the first, first mistake and then first mini mistake. Now the second, third, and fourth mistakes that I see on Junkrat all the time are purely build options, and I know... There's a few trap talents that get people that they want to pick these just because of whatever reason, um, but they're essentially trap talents or they're just um, things that you should be focusing on something else. So I'm going to kind of go through the build that is that, that I like. Um, another kind of small thing is you don't need to worry about finishing this. It's just damage that's just going to keep adding up as you go. Um, so the first kind of one that's a little bit of a trap talent is Rocket Ride. Now... Rocket Ride in Quick Match seems like it's a really good ultimate ability just because it if you're low health, you can pop it and you'll come back at full health. Well, in Quick Match, it's usually because you don't have a healer or a tank, so that's kind of necessary. But when you have a healer and a tank, it's better to have Riptire for a few reasons. One, Riptire has a shorter cooldown. Two, Riptire doesn't take you out of the fight, meaning you can activate it at any point, deal damage. Three, Riptire is a CC. Four, Riptire puts them into a position where they want to deal damage to something and use abilities on something that isn't a hero. So it has a thousand health that they need to do damage to, which means that your team has a thousand health that they're not doing damage to your team. So Riptire is one that I highly recommend, and I want to show you guys quickly just um, some just statistics on this. Rocket Ride is picked 20% of the time with a 41% win rate compared to Riptire who's picked an 80% of the time with a 50% win rate. Rocket, Rocket Ride alone is decreasing the win rate of Junkrat by at least 2%. That's how bad it is. So, um, his overall win rate, I mean. I mean, the, if you pick Rocket Ride, you're already 9% down. Um, but I'm just meaning his overall win rate. So, picking Riptire is a must. Um, when you have Riptire... Practice is the best way to improve that um, on how to how to use it in the best way. Um, but yeah, that's a, that's the second big mistake that people are making. The third big mistake that people are making is not abusing um, Junkrat's level 13 talent. Now, Junkrat's level 13 gives him one of the biggest power spikes at level 13 out of any hero in the game. 
And what I mean by that is usually the biggest power spikes for heroes is level 10, level 16, level 20. 10 gives an ultimate ability, 16 usually gives one of the strongest talents, and then level 20 upgrades your ultimate ability. Or upgrades just a really strong part of your hero. So, Junkrat has a unique place because at level 13 he gets a very powerful talent. And what this talent does, it allows him to go further when you hit yourself with the mine, as well as it reduces the cooldown by 12 seconds. Meaning effectively, you have almost no cooldown on this because the travel time alone is going to be long enough. So what this does is it allows you to jump far enough to where you can jump from lane to lane as well as it's a low enough cooldown to where you can clear a lane really quickly and then you can immediately jump back to another lane and you could be ready to fight and clear in that lane as well. This also allows him to position very safe in combat because you can throw all of your abilities out, you can do a couple auto attacks, and then you can set an escape route and then pop out of the escape route and then come back in when your cooldowns are back and do the whole thing again. Um, it also prepares you, what I don't see a lot in regular games, but I see in a lot of pro games, is when you're about to use your ult, you're vulnerable for 15 seconds. So what people will do in pro games is they will use your, your uh, bomb to position yourself to where you're safe before you use your ult. And you can use things to increase the speed of your ult or get around other different things you need to get around and then you can blow it up and you're in a safe position then when you're ready to go you simply just jump back into the fight again and start heading out there so just getting practice and abusing the fact that you have this talent and using it over and over to get from lane to lane is a huge mistake that i see people missing out on they often pick other talents and i wanted to show you guys just a quick example of the pro builds that people are going um, you'll see some different talents level one here and there you'll see some different talents at 16 and 20 but literally 7, 10, 13, or sorry, 4, 7, 10, 13 are always the same talents. Um, and I just really wanted to share that because it's very important that you pick up the talents that are abused by the pros so that you can be using Junkrat to his full potential. Um, the next trap that I see or mistake that people make a lot, and, and this one really bothers me more than any others because there's not a lot of talents in the game that I feel actually make the hero worse. And this is one of the biggest mistakes that I see on Junkrat all the time because in my opinion, this makes Junkrat a worse hero. What it does is it's called burst fire and it makes your frag launcher fire in bursts. So you lose one charge. Now the cooldown's reduced, which is the one part that makes it a little bit better, but you also can't abuse a lot of the things that I explained. You can't abuse the alternating, you can't fire one off first so that you get seven shots, as well as you can't choose where they go. Um, you fire these and you can't change the direction midway. So if you miss with one, you're effectively missing with all of them. You know what I mean? So it's better and it's easier to dodge too. Once you see someone getting this, this talent, and they fire the first one, you know where you need to dodge. So the only time that this works and is actually valuable is in the very rare cases that you're firing against someone who is CC'd in a location. But the thing is, is if you picked a different talent and someone CC'd, you still have a lot of benefits. So what a lot of the pros will do is pick between spread volley and endless nades. If you don't know which one to pick, I highly recommend Endless Nades, especially if you're going to be getting Cannonball at level 20. Um, endless Nades, it makes it to where you're reducing the cooldown by um, 1.5 seconds for each hero hit. So let me, um, let me reset the talents really quick, and I'm going to show you just exactly what this does. Um, so... So when you get Cannonball, you're firing these, these ones and they're a lot bigger and they're going to hit more things. So if you're hitting these enemies right here, and let me see if I can hit it just right on the edge. What's the cooldown of Q? Can someone tell me? Can someone tell me when I can stop casting Q? Do you kind of see, as long as you're hitting two people with your grenade, you could be casting it forever. I'm at 13,000 damage. I'm doing about 1,000 DPS. It's safe because I could be doing this from really far away. You know what I mean? If someone's stunned in a place, you might as well have endless grenades because it's just going to do better. Um, so those are essentially the four mistakes that I keep seeing on Junkrat being played over and over and over. Just to kind of repeat what they are. The first one is not alternating your attacks and your bombs, uh, which I just did incorrectly there. But uh, this effectively doubles your DPS. 
Um, level 13, not abusing the fact that you can jump from lane to lane and, and uh, well, of course, make a mistake there, but not jumping from lane to lane, which allows you to uh, farm two different lanes at once on a hero that could be considered an assassin or a specialist. And the last mistake that I, I, I want to share is the... Um, uh, well, there, the two last mistakes is the bomb instead of rocket ride. I see rocket ride way too much in too many scenarios. It not only takes you out of the fight, it's a longer cooldown, um, but it also isn't a CC. So if you're trying to interrupt things, it doesn't work. Um, and then the final tip is uh, picking burst fire. It's just a common mistake that I see way too often, and it's it's just a talent you really don't want to get either one of these talents are good while i recommend endless nades over spread volley that doesn't mean that spread volley is not a good talent it still is a very good talent um but those are the four mistakes if you have other mistakes that you commonly notice on junkrat feel free to add it below um i personally think he's a very strong hero just because he fills the specialist role the range dps role as well as he has a lot of cc that could set up for fights um I, I think he's really strong. He's a little bit higher skill cap than a lot of the other heroes because you want to be abusing his high mobility as well as you want to be abusing um, all of his abilities, the, the CCs that he has. While his damage might be a little bit lower than some like Greymane, uh, his utility really makes up for it. So again, if you like these types of videos, feel free to subscribe, add comments, let me know. Thank you.